and I just finished hooking up the lines there. We now have the elevator on. So now it'll really take up a lot of space in the barn. And there's the whole husking bed. So I got the unit system, and I've got, uh, you can't see the corn head in front of the combine. But there's no point in having two corn heads around here because I'm not going to be picking and shelling at the same time. And you just saw us uh, separate the back half from the front half of the faceplate, which is all fancy set up for. A lateral tilt because there's the pivot pin, there's the cylinders. And we're going to try to use this front piece here somehow. Can you lift up that corner? Yep. To create an adapter to put a new Holland head on that unit system. Because, you know, nobody could ever think of standardizing that, you know, like say three point. I guess that's not an everyday use. Too bad Henry Ford and Harry Ferguson didn't, you know, have a handshake deal on something like adapter plates for combines. Then it'd be universal. Oh, the afterthought. We aren't done yet, but that doesn't look bad. We got uh, some more work to do. However, thanks to this pivot point, it gives us a nice little spot to kind of just sit this and hold it in place while we measure and see how much we need to contemplate life about making that head fit on here. And we'll have to fill a gap at the bottom there, most likely. The biggest thing we're measuring for is there's framing on the heads, and I guess we'll go look at that soon, that kind of goes around the feeder house, and the feeder house falls in. And since the faceplate here is wider, we're going to have to accommodate for that. And I don't necessarily know if I want to go chopping down the faceplate in case I ever find myself wanting to undo my work here because I happen to fall upon a head to fit this, which seems like a ridiculous idea, because what's the point of having multiple corn heads? when I have one for the combine already. That means twice the maintenance. Um, I mean, yeah, twice the wear using it for two different uh, machines, but it would get the same amount of wear if it was on. I'm not, it's not like I'm picking or shelling any more corn than usual, we'll say. Same amount of acres. Yeah, exactly. So we're not, we're not wearing out the corn head any faster. If anything, we're saving wear on the combine and then having a whole other machine to uh, upkeep. But hey, at least it's fun to look at, right? And it's got those really cool tires on it now. Now here fly the sparks. So we've gone, did our engineering planning for a little bit. And we think we've got a plan together. I guess we're sticking with modifying the feeder house somewhat. It's not like this is gonna be a Commonly sought after you're fine. I think you still it'll still catch We gotta get that piece of metal there to shield the sparks coming out the back from lighting anything on fire um, But I don't plan on this going too far too quick that I guess I've committed to this machine that modifications okay we're gonna raise this, this face plate up six inches so the bottom feeds in level to the uh, feeder house chain. So we'll see this when we're done. Um, so we'll just kind of keep the action rolling here. How's the master welder doing? Oh, I can't hear me. How's the master <laughs> welder doing? I'm doing good. Great. It looks fantastic. So far. Yeah. It looks great. Um, the beam here isn't quite long enough to make it back, so we've got some filler. We're raising this up. We'll see all about that at the end. 
Uh, do you need me to hold anything? Yeah, we'll have to hold this up real quick. Okay, then I gotta go help Dad load a steer. It's been a busy day. How busy has it been? Uh, how many customers you've had? Since? At least, I was gonna say probably half a dozen now. At least half a dozen. Yes, yeah, so this is why things don't happen fast because we're too busy taking care of customers, but that's how we make a few pennies to stay alive on this earth. Yep. And now we're working in the lovely shelter of the barn. Um, so there's three by three is welded on the back for spacing. And we've got a notch cut up here in our uh, beam. That's a six inch tall beam. Um, and the pictures I saw from other folks who have put a new Holland head on here. They did a whole lot more fab work where we hopefully saved some by using this faceplate and just had to weld this up, but we ended up cutting down the width of the faceplate in general because we didn't need the material there. Got rid of that, but we still need the spacing forward uh, to be able to access the drive shaft um, if we're gonna keep any shields on, and even then it would still be really close with taking the shields off. Um, so yay safety there. Um, so that's the part of the pivot. It is fantastically placed to make us feel better hooking in here. Um, this piece is just filler, this angle, so the bottom of the faceplate has something to hit and help transfer the load back. Really, this box is going to be taking most of the load, so we'll test out Brennan's welds when we put the head on. Um, uh, then there will be six. I can see the holes. Let's, instead of welding this all together in case we got to make changes for some odd reason, it's less welds we have to cut if we got to change something. Uh, we're just going to bolt this whole faceplate piece onto here uh, with six half-inch bolts. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, you can tell this angle is higher than the metal here. Uh, based on the uh, high amount of paint still left and the brown, which uh, was shiny before this sat in the barn for a while, a long, long time before I got it. Um, obviously, corn didn't hit there. And right about here where my finger is, there is a big change of angle on this bottom plate that the... New idea, corn heads had a piece of sheet metal to fill coming out the back of the corn head to like span that gap. So the corn wasn't coming up this steep rise. Um, for some reason, they just had a lot of extra space there. So I'm going to have to make something to fill that in, and that's why we're raising it up six inches. So as we come out of the corn head, it is a more level, if not possibly downhill approach, because this is in its lowest possible position to hook up to the head. And obviously we'll be running the head higher, and as we get higher, the angle will decrease slightly. sound of the grinder being almost empty. Yeah, Dad's grinding feed. Oh, by the looks of it, man, I made a mess. Um, so yeah, I oil chains, and this little segment, we're showing off the final finished product of the uh, modification to pick up a new Holland head. So here we are. Now there's yellow paint, there's rust, there's galvanized steel. Um, so, <laughs> we can say we're combining three brands just because of the galvanization. It's, a, it's what I call a gleaner patch. The sheet metal is just kind of to fill in holes. I tried to explain that a little bit um, when I showed this off in the barn before. I took off the little piece of metal up here. Um, yeah, the... If you look at it from the side and how low the feeder house sits, you, know, you can't see a new Holland head, but really... Uh, 
new idea picked up their corn heads very low we'll say so yeah we had to raise it up hopefully six inches was the right amount it seems like we're going uphill a little bit but the slope isn't so aggressive and it would almost feel ridiculous to have it high enough to have it come level in um, so uh we'll have to experiment see how it works i oiled those chains typically the feeder house chains don't get oiled on combines but i went around dousing everything the driveway nick he stopped by shot oil on him whatever um, there's oil on the chains i think they're all tensioned somewhat properly i got the brakes to work i need to remember to put that cover on um, because this one rides upside down and there's just no cover on it what a joy um so to get this whole thing running in summary i had a couple bearings had to put a belt for the fans um i had to get the belts for it put these tires on and the adapter here plus i put in that shaft in the transmission redid the brakes um so it's it's not new uh, but we can go to the field i hope with a little bit of confidence uh, that it won't break right away oh and i had to move this bar you can see where it was sitting and rubbing i moved it from its corner position right there out to a farther forward bolt position um things i'll need to look at there's a hydraulic hose down there that sometimes leaks it's a connection i tightened it up it's the swivel portion but it doesn't leak like profusely really what leaks worse if you can see the pink oil on the ground is the motor for the elevator um we're just gonna kind of bite the bullet a little bit burn up some oil and deal with that in the off season or later uh you know later before next harvest um, had to replace that either sprocket really this thing had wear blocks everywhere uh, can't see much in the dark that's what drives the husking bed and this thing's browner than it was thanks to the used oil and some people say to use bar and chain oil for a chainsaw which really probably isn't a bad idea um, but we got oil on the chain just the oil we got it's the oil we used and it's better than what it was before all dry so I've... well there's a wagon behind it it moves and i'm going to end uh, this uh video of mounting let's say making the adapter here by showing off the drive shaft uh, the shaft coming off the feeder house is inch and a quarter, 19 spline. Trust me, I, I triple counted. Kept getting 19. It's weird, it's odd, it's non-existent. Um, so I just ended up using an inch and a quarter, uh, say like sprayer pump shaft adapter. It's keyed, and where that bolt goes through there was two set screw slots. That I drilled out to 3 8 put a hardened bolt in. I also drilled out the shaft because where that bolt goes through, there is a hole in it uh, to put a cotter pin to hold the weird thingy, like that. It was like a cast iron cross of sorts that went on the end to go on the drive shaft. And then I had to shorten the drive shaft. I had to cut the, like three inches or so off each side. And for those of you who are very astute and are New Holland aficionados, you realize this is not corn head I have for the TR-86 and that's why I didn't show mounting the head because there's a whole other story behind this head that's for a different video that I have to figure out um, but I, I have some footage to do that at a later time so this is the drive shaft there's a head mounted on and um, it all turns over you're gonna have to take my word for it we'll see it in live action um, at some point soon, or very late, whenever, next year, sometime. But it works. It's great.